Hello everyone, welcome to the last video uh, on this NCP Intervention Tool series where we will be discussing about the flaws and area of improvement for this tool. Uh, to know how to, le to learn how to use these tools, uh, you can refer to the videos before this and to learn how to document it, you can refer to the NCP Documentation Tool. Now, um, I have prepared here a Google document that lists down some of the things that I will be discussing today uh, and uh, it will be easier for us to track. I will also include the file in the link in the description uh, so that uh, if you prefer to read it, it will be available for you. Let's start with some of the flaws of this tool. Uh, the first biggest flaw would be the fact that this tool cannot actually think. Uh, it cannot conduct critical thinking. This is actually a feedback that I have received from other people and something that I myself, even though I tried to simulate how a person would think, I was unable to actually do so. Uh, primarily because, one, uh, my didactics knowledge is poor. Uh, I would consider myself a uh, not on the good side of uh, all of my clinical knowledge, especially when it comes to uh, clinical ones. So that's one. Uh, the second would be because uh, I actually lack the necessary skills to make this Google Sheet work. Yeah, because the primary vision that I had for it was actually to develop it into a tool. and into a tool on an application platform as in a phone application because to make it on an application would be so much more easier as compared to Google Sheet because Google Sheet is at the end of the day relying on another platform. If I can code it into a language that the phone itself can understand, uh, the app would work significantly faster. And because I'm unable to code it in app and have zero, I think zero knowledge on coding, almost zero knowledge on coding so I wasn't able to further develop some of the ideas that uh, I wanted to work with or fix some of the errors that you see in the file so uh, to further develop this tool uh, the most important two things that are needed are actually one uh, good didactics knowledge, uh, preferably if some experts, like if you have, you have to be first good in your didactic studies, uh, this should always be, developing this tool if it's your interest, this should always be a secondary concern. And the next one would be, I learned a little bit of uh, machine coding, I learned a bit of coding, I think just a little bit of background of coding would have significantly improved um, how the Google Sheet would work and if you can bring it over to some other platform like app I think the Foundation Science in IB right now is actually teaching people how to code for applications so that's, that is what further developing this tool would actually need a, a little bit of coding okay the next are what are the difficulties in using uh, uh, this tool uh, right off the back it would be the fact that it is it is used on Google Sheet platform. Uh, reason being, if uh, compared with an app, uh, Google Sheet will be much slower uh, because simply because it's borrowing another platform to work with. I I'm not exactly sure of the science behind this, but I think that an app would work faster in my experience. An app would work faster. Uh, as compared to a, a copy of it inside a Google Sheet. So that's one thing. A second is, uh, I actually designed for this tool to be used on a phone. And sometimes navigating a uh, Google Sheet on a phone is difficult, uh, especially if you are not used to it. Uh, I myself have actually gotten used to using Google Sheet on my phone and uh, even then, there are some difficulties that I actually cannot uh, get my way around of, even though I tried. So, 
that is definitely another difficulties of actually using it. Uh, the third would be using it on a phone also uh, limit the processing power. Um, a desktop, a laptop will always have more processing power as compared to a phone. Uh, you, usually that's the case uh, in nowadays. So when you use it on a phone, uh, it is quite important to actually have a good phone. Uh, I'll explain more on what I mean by a good phone later on. Uh, the phone that I am using right now is a Asus phone. Uh, my phone is a Asus phone with one gigabyte of RAM and 16 gigabyte of space. Uh, maybe I'll include another series on how to use the tool in my phone if I can find a way to actually do it. But in my experience, it did help me to significantly improve my clinical placement performance. Uh, if not at the very least, make it less stressful. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, a better phone would definitely uh, be better because it has a higher processing power. Okay, next is uh, what are some of the unfinished concepts in the tool? Uh, right now, I'm actually looking at a whiteboard. Uh, it's a whiteboard that I actually used to document some of the ideas that I wanted to work with the Google Sheet. And right now, a lot of it are actually still not worked on. Uh, I'll just list some of them down. Uh, the first is pediatric, pediatric growth chart. Uh, I've actually included a pediatric growth chart template in the link below the, in the description where you can access the tool. That is the original design for the pediatric growth evaluation in my anthropometry tab. Uh, it initially will be able to actually plot a graph, plot out a graph, the full growth chart with 5, 10, 15 percentile and then plot every single point according to the date. But I wasn't able to do that in my Google Excel sheet. So that's one thing that's actually not completed yet. Uh, the pediatric growth chart uh, is not plotted in the tool. Uh, next uh, is, of course, the EN calculator. Uh, I wanted to work on a calculator that can actually accommodate more than one product at the same time, uh, maybe even up to five product. But uh, that's even though to me that's actually quite a easy thing to get done as compared to every other thing like the pediatric growth chart and the thing that I'll describe later on. Uh, but that's something that I never actually got around doing it because uh, I only got that idea during my placement. And uh, after that, I've just been busy with case portfolio and things and started developing uh, the case portfolio part. The case portfolio part is actually developed during my clinical placement. Okay, so that's one. It can accommodate uh, more than one product. Next would be comparing, comparing the suitability of EN products. Uh, what I mean by this is sometimes when we treat patients, uh, we have a multi uh, multiple choices of EN product to choose from and we, we ourselves will start calculating to see which one would fit the patients best. There is a certain like fixed way to go about it. Of course, uh, there, are in, there are special circumstances where those fixed principles will not work, but most of the time, at least I found uh, it has worked. So I wanted to program it into the Google Sheet. I don't know what what will you use it. Uh, create it into the Google Sheet. That uh, immediately it will compare the EM products that you tell it to compare. For so for instance, I wanted to feed a patient 500 kilocal with en either Enchigo or Neutron Optimum or uh, Glucina, and I wanted to know which one would be the most cost efficient in that it would save uh, the most number of scoops. So the number of scoops would fit nicely with that number, not too much, not too little. Uh, 
that is what I wanted to do for the Google Sheet to know. I want you to compare these three products for this specific patient with this specific needs uh, while being as cost efficient as possible. At least quantity efficient as possible. But I didn't actually got around to uh, making that. So that's one. Another one. Uh, this is actually just a concept yet. I didn't even quite know how to actually go about doing this. Next would be market and I think recipe as well. Uh, market, uh, I'm someone who uh, I don't know, how, how, how should I go about describe this? Uh, when I uh, consult, when the patient will consult us, dietitian, uh, we will usually give them a certain menu and uh, all of us are aware that uh, the patients come from different socioeconomic background, so actually telling them a certain budget for the food that for the menu that you have given them and uh, where are the market available to purchase their ingredient is will actually quite be a quite helpful thing personally i think it will be a quite helpful thing for the patient to actually bring home so that they themselves have a very clear idea what is it that they can achieve what is it they can't achieve that's written on the black and white paper and they can actually see the number over there and they can adjust accordingly that's something uh, that I always wanted to do but some of the difficulties that I have encountered is uh, one uh, I don't know how to connect with market database uh, to actually make this idea work first I have to know the cost of the ingredient that are available in different markets and I have to know uh, the different markets that are actually available in the area and sometimes those prices would also change. So I had a few ideas. One is uh, I would give it a certain range. Uh, for instance, if I was able to connect with a market database using, uh, say, their October data, uh, I would give a range for their price. Uh, like the rice, say if it's thirty one ninety nine for one for one pack of rice, and sometimes they will fluctuate the prices. The fluctuation of the price wouldn't be so much as to reach 40 ringgit so I'll give it that range with the upper limit being 40 ringgit and I'll give my patient actually a range for every single one of the ingredient and when we add together uh, the patient will be presented with a range of the cost of the menu that uh, they will uh, that we are actually prescribing to them yeah so another problem is how do we account for uh, fluctuation in prices? It's not like the hypermarket would uh, be willing to always release their prices for the public and uh, some hypermarkets uh, wouldn't even have an, an online shopping site for us to review the prices so it's not practical for us to always uh, bring ourselves physically to the hypermarket to collect all of the prices. Uh, another thing that I've realized is also every single time uh, Tesco, Tesco Online, they would include a new ONS product or a new infant product, uh, infant formula. Uh, they will actually display it into their online store. I don't know if they always update it, but when they do display it on their online store, they would already have the nutrient content. And sometimes we have to, I think every single semester, the dietetic student have to go to the hypermarket to actually find out the nutrient content uh, by ourselves and sometimes we would meet a, miss a certain product because it, it's over at the corner that we couldn't see or because we lack experience so we didn't actually uh, take down the entire picture uh, what I thought was since the Tesco online already did it uh, why not we just connect ourselves with that uh, with that database like just uh, grab their information from there or maybe even grab the information from the company that made those products and always keep ourselves up to date with those things and if they are maybe not connect ourselves with the company because uh, sometimes the company might uh, choose to not release a certain information uh, just connecting it with Tesco those things that are available for purchase by the masses that database would be helpful to actually find out all of the EN without having us to actually go into the market to do it every single semester uh, every single batch yeah. Uh, next is recipe. 
uh, recipe also have the similar problem as market. Uh, I don't know how to connect with an appropriate database. I think this is partly also because uh, I myself is not someone who is very particular about taste or very particular about, particular about cooking. So uh, I initially envisioned this to actually overcome that lack of passion inside of me so that okay I always have this recipe in my phone that I know I can immediately show to my patient or share a link with them so that uh, I wouldn't just be telling them the ingredients but they also have uh, online access at any time at any place so long as they have uh, active internet connection to a whole school of recipe uh, although it's true that there are a lot of recipes available out there but uh, us dietitians can actually make our own and once us dietitians are able to establish trust with the patient then they are more likely to actually use the recipes that we introduce to them as compared to just uh, putting the recipes out there uh, yeah okay next would be scientific journal which also remind me about uh, guidelines I'll explain more about that but first on the scientific journals so as a dietetic student we just as a dietetics related worker we should always update ourselves with the latest scientific findings in dietetic study but um, the, at times we either won't have access to the database if we are not a student we have to pay the membership price ourselves or if we do have uh, we don't necessarily will be able to find the most up-to-date one uh, what I wanted to do with this scientific journal idea is actually to connect the online uh, databases uh, scientific journal databases with that of uh, Google Sheet this is just a concept uh, I don't even really have a vague idea on how to actually make this concept work but the idea is for the scientific journal findings to actually be compiled like a MNT and always be up to date on a online Google Sheet database that will directly influence the guidelines that are in the uh, Google Sheet and uh, therefore inform our decisions when it comes to dietetic health care. In an app, what it would look like is that when you boot up that app, uh, the app would show you that there are these new findings about dietetics. Of course, that is the system that, that, that can be exploited if it's hacked. Well, there are security concerns with that kind of system, but it's like a billboard for, diet by, for dietitian. They will tell you some of the newest findings that you have, tell you some of the implications on how you will actually treat your patient in the specific setting that you are treating them in and you can decide uh, whether or not to have it constantly remind you the next time you meet that patient or you would like to just completely subscribe to that option uh, in that every time you treat a patient that is the thing that is the uh, standard that it will suggest to you as you do your intervention inside that app so that's for the scientific journal. Uh, next is the guidelines. I uh, the guidelines for each cohort are collected by a resource committee. Uh, D116 is by D116 resource committee. 117, 118, uh, so on and so forth. They all operate in the same fashion. Uh, my experience is it looks a little bit messy. The process uh, maybe that's completely a problem of my own because I actually dislike reading guidelines not saying that I uh, dislike guidelines and completely don't trust the information that's available in them but I just have this lack I think a lack of passion in reading uh, that that many things at one time and uh, I do admit that's a problem of my own but an idea that I had was uh, if we already know the guideline sources they are available for example CPG, uh, Hospital and uh, Kidoki all these websites and every single year they are going to release it 
uh, a new guidelines maybe after a few years, uh, why not we make something that will connect with all of those online databases, online websites of all these officially recognized sources. And every single time they will update something new, uh, immediately that database will be alerted and the dietitian student, the, the dietetics staff, uh, they will all be informed of this thing, just shown it in the app, in the Google Sheet. So for actual dietitian in hospitals, there will be more information uh, be shown about the dietetics thing, but for students, maybe a simpler, a simpler thing to tell them what's actually new, what's actually relevant for their own learning stages at that time. So that's the idea of guidelines that uh, I wanted to work with. But I, again, I don't know how to connect, uh, how to connect with those uh, online databases or websites, and I cert I don't even know where they are uh, for some of them. Uh, so that's one of the problem. Okay, how long did it take to develop this tool? Uh, on and off, two years. It actually start. Uh, it actually started off as a replacement. Uh, it started as a replacement, uh, as a tool to help manual planning. Uh, ex menu planning for the exchange list calculation, exchange calculations, and later on, during my community placement, uh, I realized that there, there's uh, a potential, a potential for Google Sheet to actually script the NCP itself. Uh, at the time, I was actually working on another Google Sheet of my own that's actually completely unrelated to uh, this NCP thing or my dietetic study in general, where I was experimenting with um, sentence forming inside, uh, forming sentences inside a Google Sheet, and during community placement, I suddenly realized that there's there's actually a potential to incorporate that. Uh, that function, that feature, into NCP processes. So I tried it out during uh, during MCO this year, uh, 2020, and here's the tool is actually the the product of it. The tool is that product. Uh, but uh, the tool that you see now, I would say is actually developed within three months uh, as opposed to what I said uh, previously two years. A uh, reason being, uh, before that three months, the tool more or less remained only as a, a menu planning tool, a menu uh, battery calculation tool, and an equation calculation tool. That's it. That's the only features that they have. It doesn't help you to do client and medical history doesn't help with medication, doesn't help with biochemical, doesn't help help with NFPF, doesn't help with a lot of a lot of other things, uh, especially case portfolio and NCP. It doesn't at all help with that. Uh, most of the thing I completely revamped the entire Google Sheet during the MCO and it took about three months. Uh, what was the initial vision for this tool? If in the description of every single one of the videos before this, uh, they, I actually included a NCPI tool uh, project proposal. Uh, this was the time when I started to actually work on the Google Sheet. Uh, so I I wanted to explore, okay, how how do they actually develop a project? How do they actually develop a huge scale app-like thing? So this is the closest thing that I found. and. Uh, and that's the best thing that I have access to, so that's what I work with. Yeah, here's an overview. I wanted to reduce the time taken. And once you reduce the time taken, uh, those times can actually be put into uh, decision making, which I think is the actually the most human part. Once we, once us human are certain a, a certain way already work, uh, we would mechanize it. We would make it automated. That's how factory works. That's how healthcare system works. Uh, Technology help actually helps us to speed up. Given 
uh, speed up our work given that we actually found out the right way to do things first. And then we can continue to take the time that we saved from automation into figuring out newer and better ways to actually do things and automate those processes again. Uh, my goal was to make it less than one megabyte. Uh, you, can, you can read more and more about the uh, proposal by clicking the link, but here I will not go through much of it. So that initial vision was to reduce time in order to give more time for human ingenuity in decision making. Uh, how large is the file right now? Uh, in phone, it's uh, 2.1 megabyte. In PC or laptop, it is uh, 2.8 megabyte. Uh, See, it's significantly smaller than uh, your usual app that may be 45 to 75 megabyte large. Uh, but then again, uh, this is given if you have installed uh, Google Sheet in your phone. Which brings me to the next question, why did I choose Google Sheet? Why not uh, Microsoft Excel? Uh, reason being, uh, I'm more used, I'm more familiar with the Google account. Yeah, I'm more familiar with the Google account. I operate more with my Google account as opposed to my Outlook account. That's the first reason. And second reason is uh, Google Sheet is already rooted in my phone. Uh, my phone is one of Android, so it's it's already rooted. I don't know how to remove it, so I just work with that. Uh, second is uh, there are some features uh, in Google Sheet that Excel actually doesn't have. Uh, but that's actually a quite weak reason because Excel also have a lot of features that uh, Google Sheet actually don't have. Uh, then it would be... There is one more reason, uh, let me think. Uh, I think those are the primary reasons why I actually make it on a Google Sheet. Perhaps if you can develop it into a, uh, I don't know, a Microsoft Excel, you could do that. But you definitely need the space inside your phone. And, and uh, if Google Sheet is already rooted in your phone, maybe Google Sheet is the better option. Uh, why do I make that tool in the first place? Uh, it's because I am poor in calculation. Uh, I'm actually a, I'm actually terrible in mathematics. So even simple calculations, especially when I'm stressed, uh, I would not be able to perform. So I thought, uh, why not I give it to Excel to actually perform that so that I can focus the limited mental energy that I have on something else. And although I realize that, yes, uh, that would not eventually develop my counting ability and eventually in the working field, I would need that thing, that skill. But at the time, uh, I needed an immediate solution to uh, that problem. So that's why I created. But eventually, I discovered that this is actually my passion. Uh, in making making this kind of uh, automated tool, so I just continue working on with it. Yeah, it, it makes uh, it makes my days in uh, uh, didactic study more bearable. Uh, you can do it for a different reason as well. Uh, you can further develop it for different reasons as well. For me, it only ever served to benefit my studies. Uh, it's not that I don't want to release it to other people, but actually, if you even see the version right now, uh, the one that I actually had a lot of time to develop during MCO, an entire three months, I was still unable to fix a lot of the bugs that I have. That's still inside of it, a lot of the errors, that's still inside of it. And even if I do release it for other people, some of the bugs, I actually don't know how to fix. So, uh, it's not the most stable kind of product that I can release for other people it might actually make it worse for them rather than better. So that's one reason. Uh, but I do see potential in this kind of tool. Uh, it can help people, if not at the very least. It, at the very least, it can be a educational experience.
uh, it can help with our education experience where we are exposed to how we actually write it. Uh, the Google spreadsheet itself already have a certain way of writing it. Of course, it's not perfect, but at least it's a start for those who are first time exposed to NCP and DCM. So at the very least, it can be an educational tool. Uh, what are some of the ideas that I did not work with? Uh, if you look up here, uh, I already stated some of the ideas that I actually did not work with. I uh, did not work with them, I have also stated that reasons uh, above. Uh, what are some of the feedbacks I received about this tool? One, uh, it cannot do critical thinking. I tried, uh, if you look at, I did try to make it able to do that uh, in the link tab, which I explained in the resource video. But uh, I think even my own thought process is already not good and my ability to translate my own thought process into a machine language is even poorer so when those two combine together yeah, it's just a disaster and to this day I still can't make it work. Uh, second is uh, sentence structure. I received a feedback uh, that the sentences inside it is very rigid. Uh, sentence uh, writing sentences is an art, uh, and uh, especially when there is no critical thinking inside the sheet, uh, the Google spreadsheet itself, when you write sentences, it wouldn't attempt to link the sentences together, to link the different concepts together, in order to communicate with the next patient, oh no, with the next dietitian or somebody else, uh, what's actually the problem the nutrition diagnosis here. Uh, the tool cannot do art. Are there other that I have? I think so far these are the feedback that I have received. Maybe it's a bit slow. Um, at least this is uh, this is what I think. Uh, it's a bit slow. It's a uh, it feels like cheating uh, because I completely did not write uh, my NCP at all. So for case portfolio, you normally you would have to write, rewrite every single one of your NCP in order to attach them inside the case portfolio. And the justification for that is for your clinical instructors, for your uh, dietitian in charge to actually see if you have the necessary critical thinking process that you should have, uh, you as a clinical dietitian should have. If they wanted to see that, uh, they should have seen the original copies that we have, but usually as we go through the clinical placement, uh, we would improve in our clinical skills. So the previous NCP it will not be representative of the skills that we actually have towards the end of the placement. So the original copy would be actually useless to assess our ability to think critically because one, we grow in our skills, two, uh, and the primary reason is because it's messy. So it's hard for the person to actually even read. And I thought to myself, if, if it's messy and we have to rewrite it, uh, why not rewrite it in a digital form? If what they wanted to see is my top process, uh, why not I can just write that into that digital form so that I don't actually have to uh, rewrite everything whenever I have I have concerns with the margin, with the spelling and stuff. So I completely did not write any of my NCP. Now, if you could believe that, uh, there's almost 15 NCPs that I have to include in my case portfolio. I completely did not write any one of them. And I definitely felt like cheating because all of my colleagues and sorry, and I say sorry to all of you first, all of the colleagues, uh, all of them actually write and uh, it was very painful to write. And it took a long time to write. And of course you lose uh, the chance to train your NCP and eventually in the working field of course writing it is will be a lot faster than digital. Uh, I don't think the healthcare system in Malaysia right now can actually work with a digital form. Uh, it's not there yet. A lot of the paperwork still has to be done in written form. Yeah. 
So maybe uh, in the next generation, after I die, potentially af way after I die, uh, maybe the healthcare system will develop into a digital era where everything is not written on paper, it's all digital. Then at that time, uh, there will be no point in actually write any, writing any NCP anymore. Uh, next is uh, monetizing this tool. Uh, I also received a suggestion for other people that uh, I should consider monetizing this tool. Um, uh, I never thought that that was possible. Uh, uh, it's not a confidence issue. It's uh, in its Google Sheet format. If it's being used on a Google Sheet platform, there isn't much to monetize because. It's slow, it's riddled with problems, there are a lot of bugs, there are a lot of error. Uh, it can only be monetized if it is developed into a app. And not only is it developed into an app, it is maintained. So they are, for it to, I think for it to actually be monetizable, it has to be a reliable solutions for the dietitian. It has to serve the purpose that a dietitian would serve in the healthcare system of Malaysia. So there has to be experts in the dietetics field to be actually doing that. And we also need the help of the programmers and uh, people who do coding. And there has to be the communication in between them for the app to actually be developed and maintained and be kept up to date with the system that Malaysia decided to use and the guidelines that is updated every year, the products that's updated every year, the market that changes every single year, it has to be maintained with all those different different parties. Only then, I think it's a reliable solution and a responsible decision when we decided to actually monetize it. Or else if it's a not reliable solution, the people that will eventually suffer is of course the patient. Uh, in summary, it can, I think, it can only be monetized when it's a reliable solution. Right now, in its Google Sheet form, it's not. Uh, it's slow. There's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of unfinished concepts. Uh, it uh, it doesn't keep itself updated, and it needs an entire team, at least someone who have that weird combination of skills to make it work. Uh, the coding knowledge, the access to different database, the ability to find those things, uh, good dietetics knowledge, and probably a lot of time on your hand because uh, developing this tool, I don't think it uh, will ever be a major part of your dietetics study. Okay, so those are the different thoughts and different discussion. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave it in the comment. Uh, if you have any questions pertaining to any of the parts of uh, the, di the different tabs of the tool, you can leave it at their appropriate videos and uh, I will respond to them. Uh, uh, don't be concerned about any copyright issues uh, because uh, I actually will not claim any ownership over this Google Sheet. Uh, in fact, I welcome anyone who can further develop it. Uh, for me, as someone who I honestly would say not that passionate in dietetic study, uh, this tool can only serve me the purpose of making my life more bearable. But uh, I think if this tool is given in the right hands with those people with the right skills, with actually the right passion, uh, it it will be able to help the dietetics field in uh, Malaysia, if not at the very least just the educational aspect of it. Uh, to have a machine that's there to teach you how to write, to tell you uh, what are the decisions that you have to make. In fact, if the tool itself can tell you all of the decisions that it can make, uh, map it out in the machine language and then translate it into a language that a person can understand, uh, immediately uh, it's easier to learn and whenever we have an idea, we can test it out with the machine and everyone would be more or less standardized in the way that they approach the patient in the, and if they have, if they discover a good way to actually do it, uh, there will be a team 
that would receive that feedback that will uh, update it, if not at the very least announce the problems with the app and tell the students and disseminate it. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's all for this video. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, and I hope this tool will be helpful for you and I wish you all the best in your didactic study.